talk about and to look at key issues around aging and health and well-being for people with an intellectual disability. And many of you may be familiar indeed with the intellectual disability supplement to the Irish Longitudinal Study, IDS tilde. And, and it really it, it, it is under, the, the, it's a huge body of work. And I think IDS tilde in its own right has been hugely helpful to us in understanding uh, those at risk of COVID with an intellectual disability or aging and uh, other risk and protective issues. And it really, that's what the center very much focuses on. And as I said, we, we, have, we were just in the middle of wave four when the COVID pandemic struck in, in March and, and we will be issuing our COVID report uh, on December the 3rd. And hopefully people on this uh, webinar this afternoon will be able to join that launch, which has been launched by our minister on the 3rd of December at half 10. So we can give you more information in relation to that. But when COVID happened, TCID or the Trinity Centre, we responded and worked very closely with services and, and put together a lot of easy read materials around symptoms, around protection, testing, treatment, self-isolation, health promotion and mental health. And all of these can be downloaded from our website. And we collated information because there's a lot of really good information which many services throughout Ireland, indeed internationally, have been developing. And we wanted to make sure that uh, we included a, a kind of a one-stop shop for, for uh, information and hopefully information that was helpful to people who are working in services and to people with an intellectual disability themselves as, as they try to, to, to live through this very uncertain period. Uh, we also did a, a number of, of, of other press statements and blogs and, and tried to keep uh, the conversation and the inclusion of people with an intellectual disability on the agenda. Uh, we also uh, gathered, as I said, resources from many other groups um, uh, and many other areas uh, throughout the country. And, and this was really important for us, clinical information, health promotion information, people supporting people who perhaps had autism, family support issues, those supporting people who had dementia, advanced care planning and bereavement. And, Professor Ailish Burke from the School of Nursing and Midwifery worked very closely with, with the HSE and other groups and, and developed a, a really good uh, online resources to support people during this time. And at that time, we also developed a series of, of webinars, really, which was aimed at the ID sector. And they can be all downloaded from our website. Um, uh, uh, practical issues to help people, to support people during the particular crisis. And then we sent out a, a wonderful call to people with an intellectual disability themselves, and we needed to look beyond the medical response to infection control. And we really were interested to see how people were dealing, what was called the new normal. And I know that Professor Brendan Kelly will talk to us later on, and he doesn't like the word no, new normal, and I don't think any of us perhaps on this call does, uh, and things that people were doing differently. And we got an amazing array of fantastic artwork and stories and pictures uh, from people with an intellectual disability, which really showed their creativity, their innovation and their resilience. And that was really during the first wave of the pandemic. And we have a beautiful short video clip, which is on our site as well, which, which you, you should continue to look at because it's just simply so uplifting. But what we do know is that uh, from COVID-19 and everything that has been said about it, that we know that there are risks of increased adverse uh, infection outcomes and there's increased risk for people contracting the disease. And what we do know is that particularly for people with an intellectual disability who are older that, uh, who, and who have a particular health problems like uh, diabetes, like cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, we know now that the risk of immobility, perhaps epilepsy amongst the intellectual disability population and obesity are, are, are risk factors that, um, that uh, puts people at risk of having poor outcomes should they get the infection. 
So we need to look at that group of people. And then we know this is increased risk of contracting the disease. And once community transmission is high, of course, there's an increased risk of, 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 of other people being exposed to it. So what we know now is that there is restrictions are in place. And, you know, we're all waiting on, on, on uh, what um, Dr. Tony Houlihan will tell us on Thursday. But we, we know that we have had a lot of restrictions within ID services and uh, that external uh, visitors have, 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 have uh, been uh, huge restrictions around that. We are operating within a two meter social distancing. There has been a restricting on both indoor and outdoor activities. And there's been advice on church services and other activities. And for many people in our society, in particular older people with an intellectual disability and indeed many young people uh, you know, being able to go to the church of their choice and religious services has been important. And Christmas is a time particularly where people would really have enjoyed many of the, 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 the church related uh, celebrations and activities, regardless of what faith people have. Uh, and uh, for many, this is likely to be restricted as, uh, coming up to the Christmas period. Of course, hand hygiene and cough etiquette will, will continue to remain really important and the use of a uh, phone and video contact. So one of the things that I was concerned about was that when I spoke with people with an intellectual disability and indeed when I speak with people in the general population, one of the major narratives is, oh, Christmas is gone. There'll be no Christmas this year. Christmas is cancelled. And we felt a huge obligation at the Trinity Centre for Aging and Intellectual Disability at Trinity College to try and address that narrative and to try to give people a sense of hope that, yes, we all want to celebrate Christmas. I want to celebrate Christmas. And I think that there are many things that we can do. And uh, I suppose this afternoon and, and, and this evening's meeting is about sharing uh, ideas on things that we can do and things that we can do now, uh, regardless of what restrictions is in place, to make this a really memorable Christmas and uh, to make sure that it, it is something we can truly remember. So things like Christmas decorations and we can hear about people's innovation around making these and getting these up and getting these up in time. Getting your Christmas music and our favourite Christmas music going. Christmas clothes, you see me in my Christmas hat already, so I'm already uh, ramping up to, to a jolly, jolly Christmas. And then Christmas food and Christmas baking. And we, I wanted to hear from people who are already thinking about many of these things and ask them to share with us some of the things that they, the innovative things that they are doing so that we could share that to, to, to the wider population. Uh, you know, if no visiting is allowed and, and, and you know, one of the big, um, uh, like, I mean, within ID centers and services, I mean, uh, Christmas always has been just such a special time. It has been uh, such a fun time and, a, you know, a time when there was great celebration where you had family and friends coming but, you know, if visiting isn't allowed, do we have any outdoor areas where people can socialize and see family? And how are we going to set that up to make sure that we can have that? And we have our, our visitor guidance around that. But is there something that people can do together outdoors? And I'm hoping that people this afternoon will share some of the ideas that they have in terms of th things that they can do. We all love getting in Ireland to Grafton Street, or if you're down in Limerick, or, or you're in Cork, to look at the lights, to go to the zoo, to look at all of these wonderful display of, 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 of festive, festive lighting and music and atmosphere. And for many people, we, we're not going to be able to experience that. So I think we have got to bring that atmosphere to where we live. We have got to create our own. And, and this is what this afternoon is about. Um, and, you know, it, most importantly, we have all now started to connect using the internet, but it's really important to just double check that we have connectivity in the house. And, you know, will we be able to see your family and friends online and how can we set that up? 
and can we access mass or other religious events or the Christmas carol services that many would have yeah, online. online. And this is a little gift from, from the Trinity Centre for Aging and Intellectual Disability. And we are going to be created this virtual advent calendar. And I want yeah. to thank Michael Foley, who's on our team. I don't want to... Yeah. to to create any, uh, to take any um, responsibility for this wonderful piece of work. But from the 1st to the 24th, we're going to post up an activity on Twitter from uh, at Aging with ID that will take you to a recipe, an activity, a Christmas joke, or a song, or something festive. So we're going to be tweeting that out, and every day from the 1st of December to the 24th, you're going to get an activity explain to you what you can do and how to do it. And being from Cavan myself and after Cavan winning yesterday, of course, in the Ulster Championship, and my good friend, Nevin Maguire, sent on this lovely message uh, to everybody. And I want to, to, to play it here for you. Hello everyone, it's Nevin Maguire here. And I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy and peaceful Christmas. This year, Christmas will be a little bit different but that's okay. We can still have a happy Christmas and we can still do things like de making decorations, writing Christmas cards, and of course, my favorite, baking and cooking. The Trinity Center for Aging and Intellectual Disability have asked me to put together a delicious mint pie recipe. So you can make fun with yours and also you can make mince pies with your family and friends and have a bake off and see who's is the best. Take care of yourselves this Christmas, wash your hands, and wear a mask where necessary. But most of all, have a very happy and peaceful Christmas and enjoy the good food. Take care of yourselves. So that was a lovely greeting from, from Neville McGuire. Um, so we're delighted to have that. Hello, everyone. Oh, sorry. And uh, we also got another message from another uh, uh, very famous uh, uh, chef as well, Richard Corrigan, and uh, another great uh, uh, restaurant in, in Cavan. And Richard has also contacted me to say that he's going to share some very special recipes for you to make for Christmas 2020 that will make Christmas a little more special. So I'm really, you can see here, I'm building up here to the great Irish Christmas Bake Off across intellectual disability services. With, with really delicious recipes from two of our, our wonderful chefs in this country. So that's all I really want to say, and that's our website, and I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to hand over now to Professor Brendan Kelly, who's, who's going to say a few words and share a brief presentation. Okay, hello. Um, hello. Uh, Brendan he, Kelly here. You can can you hear me? Okay, am yes, I? Am we can hear you great. Yeah. Listen, thank you very very much, Mary and everybody, for asking me to talk to you today. Um, hello everybody there. Um, hello, how are you? Doing doing great. It's lovely to see you all. I'm going to try and share uh, some slides here, which will uh, hopefully work, uh, but might not. I guess. Um, Okay, so uh, hopefully you can see my screen there. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Christmas and about mental health and well-being uh, during COVID-19. And of course, the big message is that Christmas is bigger than COVID-19. We're all worried about the pandemic and treatment and so forth, but Christmas is coming and it's one of the most important times of the year um, so we're going to build up to it. And as Mary said, and as Nevin Maguire said, and Richard Corrigan sharing recipes, there is really so much that we, that we can do. So I'm going to talk a little bit about minding your mental health in general, and then a little bit about Christmas. And then hopefully we're going to get some good ideas and practical suggestions from you all uh, about what we can do in our different settings. Uh, I wrote a tiny little book called Coping with Coronavirus, and basically I have five pieces of advice about minding your well-being uh, during this period. And the first one is, as, as, as Mary said, um, people call this the new normal, 
but it's it's not normal. It, this is this is abnormal. This is strange and different. And we need to just remember that life won't always be restricted like this. <laughs> Things improve and pandemics pass. So that's my first piece of advice for you. This isn't normal. Things can and will improve. And by next Christmas, um, this virtually all of this will be a memory if we even remember it. Okay, so that's the first thing. This is not normal. So don't worry about being a little bit upset, being a little bit frustrated at times. We're all feeling this and um, this isn't normal. The second piece of advice I have for everybody is to be very careful about the, the media and the news on the television and the radio and limit that. Just tune in maybe once or twice a day. Don't spend all your day listening about the global pandemic. Twice a day is plenty. Be sure, otherwise, you're carrying the, the weight of the world on your shoulders. And, you know, we're not designed for that. So tune in, stay informed. But between times, don't be listening to the radio or reading about this on the Internet obsessionally. It, it's not helpful for you or for anyone. We do need to, as Mary said, prioritize our routines. Um, and above all, try and go outside. When we get worried in our heads and our thoughts are flying around, it's not always possible to, to fix them just by thinking more. Going outside, if you have an outside space, is a really magical way to interrupt your thoughts. If you're feeling down and you step outside, um, you will feel better. So that's a strategy that we can all use. And the final one, to find the fifth strategy is that we should all do something that we really, really enjoy and that interests us. Sometimes when I'm going for a walk, I, get, I just drift away in my head and an hour could slip past and I wouldn't even notice it. For other people, it might be something like going running or doing knitting or doing gardening. But these um, techniques give us a little holiday from COVID in our heads and we must prioritize those. Do the things you love doing that make the world melt away, be it walking or running or gardening or playing with the dog or knitting, something like that uh, is magic and it gives us a holiday from COVID in our heads. So my little book has five, five key tips. The first one is that this is not a normal time. So allow yourself to be a little anxious at times because everybody feels like that and be compassionate towards yourself at those times. Limit your media intake. 15 minutes twice a day is plenty for reading about the numbers, the vaccines, all that stuff. Don't do it all day long. Um, the third thing is do prioritize routine in your day when at all possible, doing the things you do, your diet, your exercise or whatever. Working from home, it's good to go for a walk at the start and end of the day as if commuting. The fourth thing is to go outside, step outside the door. It's magic when you do it for anxious thoughts and then do something that really absorbs you. If you want to read more, uh, the book is just a euro and you can download it and proceeds go to the Red Cross. But we're really here to talk about Christmas and, and why we need Christmas. Now, I've got um, two children and um, when I told them today, I was going to be talking about why we need Christmas they were, they said, you know, we always need Christmas. They said, you don't even need to explain why we need Christmas. We could do with Christmas twice a year, you know, and we'd feel better if we had it twice a year. So the first thing is we always need Christmas every year, twice a year, ideally, but that's not going to happen. But we need it even more this year. We, we must not let uh, the pandemic change everything about who we are and what we do. We are, we are, as a people, bigger than the pandemic, and Christmas is part of our life, our world, our emotional journey through the year. We always need Christmas. The second point here is to do with how we've coped with the pandemic. If you had told me last year that this year, at this time, we'd be wearing masks, we'd be keeping distance, a lot of stuff would be closed, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have said, we can't cope with that. But you know what? For the most part, we did. Now, most people have had bad days and down days and anxious days. But for the most part, we have coped with this far better than any of us would have predicted. 
we are much more resilient and stronger than we give ourselves credit for. And when all this is over in a few months time, one of the big lessons will be that we are stronger people, we are wiser people than we imagined, and we're also kinder. Because a lot of the initiatives that Mary was outlining there from her center in Trinity, um, you know, they tap into a broader series of things that are happening. Um, people coping when services have been shut down, services finding new ways to operate, um, new, new um, innovations on the, on the internet, on Twitter, on all kinds of things. One of the messages here is that our mental health is stronger than we would have predicted. We are, as I like saying, down, but we are not out. Um, surveys tell us about one person in five is having very significant difficulty coping and needs help beyond their family and friends. But that number seems to be falling and we are coping far better. The third reason why we need Christmas, and this is a special reason for this Christmas, is that when you look at the news from day to day, you don't see the big picture. But when you step back, the numbers of people, the numbers of cases are very much coming down in Ireland. The treatments have improved enormously in our hospitals and, and elsewhere. And the vaccines which are coming are very clearly coming. Lots of independent evidence that vaccines are going to happen. That was by no means certain, but it's looking certain now. So we are getting a huge improvement in the situation in the run up to Christmas. So this is, uh, these are real gifts. These are amazing things that are happening, particularly with the vaccinations and the treatments. So we always need Christmas is my first point. I would like it twice a year, but I've never made any progress with that argument. Our mental health in COVID has been challenged. Our well-being has had a tough time, but we have done far better than anyone would have predicted. We are more resilient, we are stronger, kinder, and it turns out we're more connected in a good way than we thought. And then there are these particular Christmas gifts this year, which is the pandemic coming under control. So we do need Christmas uh, right now. Um, and it's starting that little bit early, uh, as far as I can see, but there's absolutely no harm in it starting early. Um, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different. And I've some thoughts here, and I know that you're going to add to these as, as we progress through the afternoon. Um, we have less physical connection with each other now. So the, the very first piece of advice I have is to have the physical connections that we can have with each other. And one of these really simple ones are Christmas cards in the post, letters and parcels to each other. In many, many households across Ireland, the highlight of the day is the arrival of the post man or the delivery person or, or whatever. And we can give that to other people by sending them whatever, particularly children sending, um, you know, crafts and gifts to grandparents who might be uh, still, you know, on their own in their houses. The other big message of Christmas every year, of course, is that we get more pleasure from giving gifts than we get from receiving gifts. That has always been the way that we enjoy uh, delighting other people more than we enjoy getting stuff ourselves. So the best way to make yourself happy, particularly this Christmas, is to give people gifts. Giving them your time is the biggest gift uh, you can give, but also giving people stuff. Uh, posting it in the post can be good as well. One of the best things we can give anybody this Christmas is a chance for them to share their worries with us. A lot of people are anxious and you'll find that if you talk to someone else about how you're feeling or your anxiety, they're going to take the opportunity to tell you how they're feeling as well. And that is the most important thing that we can give to anyone, uh, which is um, giving them time to share what they're worried about. And, you know, it's going to turn out to be exactly what you're worried about, too, because we're all essentially the same. And my final piece of advice, which I guess no one else might agree with, is we do need to give ourselves a fairly big Christmas gift this year. Um, because we have gotten through what is, for many people, the most difficult year of their lives, and certainly one of the difficult, most difficult years for Ireland as a country. Um, so we need to be very compassionate to ourselves, recognize this is not normal, 
and give ourselves a great, huge, big Christmas gift of some description. The thing that you were thinking you might get and then you thought, no, you won't. Maybe you'll get it for yourself. Maybe you won't get it for yourself. I'm telling you right now, on doctor's orders, go off and get it for yourself. Um, we need to reward ourselves. And if anyone gives out to you, just say that I told you to buy yourself the biggest Christmas gift you've ever received. And if they have a problem with that, they can get in touch with me because we all need to mind ourselves that little bit more than we previously did. I have a little bit more stuff along those lines in this, um, which we can get copies of to you in due course, um, or you can get for just a euro for the Red Cross. I suppose my big point is that we have coped better than we would have expected. We do need to help each other, and we do need to remember that Christmas is bigger and more important um, than anything else. And once we use our face coverings, once we do our distancing, once we stick within the public health guidelines, we'll find there's a lot that we can do. We need to look at the public health guidance that's going to come on Thursday and don't ask, what are we not allowed to do? Ask, what can we do? What is permitted here? What are the permissions? Make a list of them and do every single one of them because a great deal will still be permitted and Christmas is too important um, and too enjoyable to let it, let, it be, let it be changed too much. It will be different, but um, there is so much that we can still do. So for specifics, I'm going to finish up. I'm going to hand, I think, back to, uh, back to uh, Mary, who will introduce the next phase of the afternoon. Um, and thanks again for asking me to speak to you. So I think Mary is talking away there, but I don't think we can hear her. Um, so I see her mouth Brendan, moving. I'm just going to unmute. Thank you very much, Brendan, for that. Um, that was wonderful. And thank you so much, Brendan. And I am certainly looking forward now to decide what is I'm going to buy myself for, for, for Christmas <laughs> now that I have got the doctor's orders in relation to that. But I think there's so much in what you said, you know, just not having such a focus on the media, looking at what we can do versus what we can't do and uh, really looking at other innovative ways to do things. I'm going to introduce the people who are on our panel now because we have a large number of people and it gives me great pleasure indeed to introduce them. And I'm just going to introduce them in the manner that they appear on my screen. So this is in no particular order. So I'm going to introduce, uh, say hello to Patricia Cronin. Uh, Patricia is a, from a, a, a Dorset Charity Service in, in Limerick and she is retired and she's with her staff member, uh, Imelda Delan as well, who's joining us from Limerick. And you're very welcome, Patricia, and we'll come back to you shortly. I also want to say hello to Mary Lucy. Mary is from a, a service manager in the Dublin part of the Dorset Charity Service. And uh, Mary will tell us about their plans to make Christmas happen there. I want to say hello to people from Stewards Care Services, to uh, Noel McCarran, who's a chair of the Arts and Entertainment Committee. That's wonderful. Thanks. Also to Ross O'Neill. Um, Ross, you're very welcome. Lovely to have you in the committee. And Ross is a Trinity graduate, um, a service user uh, within, within Stewards Care. So you're yeah, lovely to have you. And I know what Ross uh, works full time with Down Syndrome Ireland. So, so you're very welcome, Ross. And we'd be delighted to hear what you have to say. Una Coates, another graduate from Trinity College. So you're very welcome, Una. Lovely to have you join us. And uh, Una works in retail and uh, also is on the advisory committee of Inclusion Ireland. And I know Una will have a lot to say. Amelda Delana, I think I introduced Amelda as well. And Maylin Yap. Uh, Maylin uh, is a self advocate, and Maylin works very closely with us at the Trinity Centre for Aging and Intellectual Disability. So you're very welcome, Maylin, and thank you as always for your input. Okay, so so that is so we have a lot of experience and a lot of people with a lot of really good ideas in in this room, and I'm just going to to maybe start off and hand over to, to, to Stuart's care and perhaps ask uh, Noel 
perhaps to talk about, um, you know, how, how you're, any ideas that you would like to share in terms of, of what you're doing at Stewards Care. You need to unmute. You need to unmute. Uh, I'm glad to see the Christmas jumper with the lights out, so that's really good. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to we'll come back to um, uh, Stuart's care shortly. Then uh, when we get that working, unfortunately we can't hear them. So okay, so so uh, uh, Mary, I'll come to you. Mary. Oh no, no one is back. Okay, great. Okay, lovely. So okay, Noel, if you could. Thanks very much. Sorry, sorry about the technical glitch. Can everybody hear me? Okay, again, uh, thanks very much for the opportunity for, for, for Ross and Una and myself to have a chat with you this afternoon. I suppose um, we here in Stewart's, Christmas is very important to the Stewart's family and always has been. Uh, we have always got an active program and no more this year than any other year, we're, we're, we're plowing on and saying Christmas is definitely going to happen in Stewart's. Uh, uh, as, as it normally does. We may have to look at things slightly different, but no, no more than the less that we're, we're, we're going to work towards providing all of the Stewart's family on campus and their community houses with the best Christmas that we can. One of the things I would say is, and we find it very useful, is every year we create a Christmas calendar. And that's very, very simple. It's gathering all of the events that we do within the organization. And we make that available to the staff and service users. And that normally comes out at the beginning of December. And you might say, well, sure, that, sure that's very simple. And it is very simple because all of the organizations that we know in the country do similar things. And as was alluded to earlier on there, one of the simple things this year is to send that Christmas card, you know, send that present, but more so in sending that Christmas card, what we've been doing for many years here is we get our service users to design a Christmas card every single year, and then we select a number of those Christmas cards, and they're going to be part of our Christmas cards for fundraising the following year. And that gives ownership to the population that lives within the organization, and it's also something that's very proud for our service users when their card is published and it comes home to their brothers and sisters and mums and dads. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. I'm going to ask Ross, you know, Ross, what is it that you are looking forward to uh, at Christmas or, or what have you planned? Um, what I'm about uh, Christmas is just, just enjoy it. Every day, just glad with it and, and enjoy the best of, of Christmas because at this moment in time, we need family and friends. You know, we have the great glue that we got to together, and that's what we need around is peace and harmony and love at Christmas time. And be with the ones that, that we love. And, and, and all I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to give my love and my experience around to everybody. Okay, excellent. That's why that it's like Christmas. Okay, excellent. That's lovely. Anuna, what do you, have you anything that you want to say that you know, you're particularly you know, going to do this year or any concerns that you have or how are you coping? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this time of year is Christmas, and we want to enjoy with family or sisters you have around you, and also friends. Um, it's yeah, it's so important to connect with people around this time. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's great. 
And I know one of the things that you're you're doing on the campus is is creating that Christmas uh, extravaganza using lights and stuff. Do you want to briefly say something about that? Okay, as I say, as I said, as I alluded to you before, there our calendar of events is very important. But normally we would, you know, go to visit the lights in Dublin or go to the zoo. But because, uh, you know, we're not in a position to do that this Christmas and to keep everybody safe and, uh, and that, we've decided to put a lighting display on the campus but on the ground here. So that number one, we can enjoy the festivity of Christmas. We can enjoy the lights that our service users would love to go and see. So we brought that to the campus here where they will be able to go out the front door and we will be uh, have music set up on site and we're going to uh, have multiple decorations around the grounds so that people can enjoy the Christmas spirit in the safety of their, of their own environment with support from their own staff to get us through this very, very difficult time. But get right. to have the opportunity to experience the magical feeling of Christmas in a very safe environment. Lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to go to Limerick now. And I'm going to have a word with Patricia. So, Patricia, hello in Limerick. Hello, uh, how are you? Good to see you. And what have you planned, Patricia? Well, it's happy on Christmas and that time for me, usually, because my mother died two days before Christmas, Christmas in 1988. All right. Yeah, so that's all I came home content. from Limerick and there. Uh, my boss picked me up a travel and then when I got in the door, she was on the floor. So that's the Christmas I had. Yeah, so that's always when you lose somebody close to Christmas, it's always... Like the candles. It, 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 life does change indeed. Life yeah. does change indeed when, when, when uh, yeah, when, when, uh, when uh, you lose somebody close indeed. But hopefully, uh, you know, you, 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 will, you will have extended family and friends. I know you're retired now, Rita. So what, yeah, yeah. Uh, Patricia, so what are you doing now in your retirement? Yeah, I do a bit of uh, tapestry. You're doing tapestries, yeah. yeah and I am doing um, embroidery. Yeah. I uh, painting. Okay, so you're doing some of those things. I okay. the day. Oh, isn't that beautiful? So you're very Thank busy. You. Oh, you're very talented. Oh, that's beautiful. So you can do lots of Christmas jumpers yeah. then. So that's extremely nice. <laughs> I'm not sure, Brendan, if you want to see anything there. Um, yes, yeah, so I've had to just um, go and explain as well on the 8th of December. Um, we're linking in with all the, we're linking, we're linking in with all the CRS houses. So um, we're all going to do a Zoom call and turn on the Christmas lights in the houses. And each house then is going to do a Christmas carol. I was going to sing. And we're going to sing a song. Well, I'm going to be singing anyway because they, they run out the door if I start singing. Very good. I teach recitation. Oh, you do recitation. Excellent. That's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah. I'm going to ask Brendan now if he wants to say anything there or to respond to any of that. Are you okay, Brendan? Yeah. No, oh, that, that that sounds like just such a great idea. Such such a wonderful way to connect up using your talents and um, your yeah. singing. I, I presume you can sing, yes? Oh God, me singing? No, I don't sing much. Only with a crowd. <laughs> well, will you, you'll give it a go. Yeah, we all sing with a crowd. Yeah, no, okay. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's lovely. Thank you, Brendan, and thank you very much, Patricia. Okay, so Amelda, you might want to talk a little bit about, you know, at a broader level in terms of some of the things that you feel will be important, uh, you know, or initiatives that you may have over Christmas, yeah. Yeah, uh, and I guess this Christmas, as you say, it's it's not going to be the same as, as other years, unfortunately. So we're, we're, we're trying to make the best of it and find, find different ways of, of, of trying to achieve the same thing, of bringing people together. Um, and Patsy outlined, and that'll be a lovely evening um, to, for everyone to turn on their Christmas tree lights at the same time and, and do their carol singing. One other, um, I suppose the, the other things that we'd normally do in the run up to Christmas is a lot of family visits around Christmas. So, so we're doing a piece of work on that at the moment to see what's the safest way and the best way we can do that. Um, and also there'd always be lots of Christmas nights out. And I mean, some would be meeting with friends from their day service area, others would be meeting with uh, with people from other residents that they know within the service and, and always one evening in the run up to Christmas 
everybody would come in here on site in, in Limerick um, into the one place and we'd have a, a little bit of a carol and prayer service and we'd finish it up with, with you know, a bit of a party and stuff. And normally it was it's a great opportunity to get everyone together. And again, that's something that obviously we can't all physically come together this year. So again, it's going to be a, a, a big Zoom call with all of our houses um, for us all to come together, do, the, do a few carols, um, and maybe all stay online and have our tea and mince pies online and look at each other on our screens. But um, yeah, it's not exactly the same. Uh, and look, we really hope next year will be, uh, when you mentioned earlier, nobody would have thought this was what we'd be doing for Christmas. Um, but but, but that's, look, that's where we are. And I know that another group are, are working on like a weekly program, like a, almost like an Advent thing. So one week they're doing crafts. Christmas uh, uh, themed crafts. The next week they're doing Christmas themed baking um, and, and, and working and card making for, for families and, and homemade gifts for families as well. So it's um, it's trying to, to bring people together in, in, a, in a different way where we can't physically be together. Lovely, that, that, that's wonderful. And, and we certainly will give everybody the advent calendar and we will have other events there that people can join into as well from the Trinity Centre. And we will have uh, Nevin and Richard's lovely delicious recipes so we will be getting all of those out to you as well I think which will which will hopefully add to the program. Mary I'm going to go to Mary Lucy now as well. Mary do you want to maybe talk a little bit about your plans? Um, yeah I suppose we've lots of plans in the Dorset Charity in Dublin as well and I suppose they'll be kicking off this week with the um, I suppose the toy show on Friday night I think it's something traditionally many of us have watched over the years so I know certainly some houses are having pajama parties and getting into the swing of it and the Christmas trees are going up. Um, I suppose there's lots of virtual events on as well this year. I mean, all the pantomimes are going to be virtual. So people will, um, you know, book for the pantomimes with the Helix here in Dublin and different other pantomimes that people will be looking at. Um, also, we would normally, like some of the other areas, have a Christmas um, dinner dance, um, a large event, we can't have that this year, but we're having a, a Zoom disco on the on the night and the houses are going to have parties at home and then we'll all virtually dance together. So we'll, we'll, we'll work that out. Um, some of our centres are going to have Christmas lighting ceremonies and like Stuart's, we'll have lots of lights both inside and outside of, of, of the centre. Christmas karaoke nights, afternoon teas, the 12 days of Christmas theme, um, obviously there'll be Christmas movie weekends I think we all know that Christmas FM will be starting soon so people will listen to that I suppose for some of the service users particularly our older service users the um, religious part of Christmas is really important and um, they've already looked up where they're going to watch mass and what they're going to do and one house had a beautiful idea of on Christmas Eve they're going to let off some red balloons um, and it's to remember all of the people in Ireland who passed away um, due to COVID. So okay. we're thinking of, of other people as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, other things that people are thinking of for this year is maybe to, to think of other people, such as donating something to a local charity um, or toy or a gift or an unwanted presence they may have themselves. So that it's not just all, I suppose, about um, ourselves and um Certainly, I think it's it's good that we all reward ourselves with that big gift as well. I wrote down that 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 note that uh, <laughs> Brendan said we'll definitely be be going with that. And um, delighted to see uh, that there'll be some cookery demonstrations for us because certainly cookery classes and cheese and wine and mince pies and Christmas cocktails and. Um, Another one, I suppose you'd, you'd mentioned earlier about meeting up with families, really important. And hopefully, depending what level we're at, we will um, do our utmost to ensure that people meet with family over Christmas. One of the things that I think could happen um, is like a, a picnic in the park. I mean, even if it was, you know, family brought sandwiches, you can get turkey and stuffing sandwiches and a flask of tea. So uh, there's lots of things I think we just need to to be really creative. I mean, there's outdoor cribs in different parts of the service. So lots and lots yeah. of different things. And I suppose um, I've got a little helper here this evening. You've got your Santi hat, but I've got, I've actually got Santi with me. And um, I think he, he's, you know, he's so important to all of us. Yesterday afternoon, 
the the child came out in me as I was in the botanic gardens and um, I heard the bells ringing, which I knew was Santi, and he was driving along in a horse and carriage. And I just thought, you know, this is Christmas. So we all need we all need Santa Claus and we all need to celebrate Christmas more than ever this year, no matter how we do it. Lovely. That is fantastic, Mary. And I, I think, yeah, and I think this is just so upbeat. And, and this is the conversation that we really wanted to, to, to generate. And yeah, that is an important point, Mary, that you said to remember that all the, 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 the pantos and the costumes, they're all on virtually. And I know my own young adults have all a party lined up because they, they have all uh, joined in for the cores, I think, are having a concert on, on, on the 12th or 13th of December. So, I mean, it is important to, to, to log on and to attend the pantos which are on and, and, and just get into the spirit of it. And I think that's really important. I know another thing when I was over, at, at, thank you, Mary, at, at, at Stuart's Care as well, it was a, the, the door competition. And I thought that was a lovely idea. No, well, I just don't know if you want to talk about that for a moment, the Christmas door competition. Yeah, yeah. Some, something that we have done uh, and we've done the last number of years is uh, a Christmas door competition where we get each area or each house or each hub to design a Christmas door with their service users and decorate accordingly. And then what we do is we present prizes to the best doors and we will actually then take the photographs of those doors and we put them as part of our Christmas card pack the following year. And it gives people an opportunity to bring that Christmas spirit together to their living area or their work area to involve staff and service users of the family. And then we have a memento the following year. Uh, as part of our Christmas celebration of an ongoing year. Excellent, excellent. That's great. I'm not sure if I've lost me, Lynn. Is me, Lynn, there that I just can't see her? Uh, maybe me, Lynn, uh, I may have I've lost her. I just wanted to make sure that she was there. Some questions have come in as well. And uh, does the panel think in residential services will be allowed to go home for a night or two at Christmas? Um, Maybe, Mary, you might want to respond to that. Um, yeah, I suppose at this point, our, at this point, our, our um, contingency um, planning group are meeting. I'm actually on it and we're meeting on Wednesday morning. Um, obviously, it will be totally dependent on, on, you know, national guidelines. And so, you know, of course, we would absolutely like people to have an opportunity to be with their family at Christmas um, so we certainly will be doing everything we can but obviously we have to ensure the safety of the residents when they come back so there's still a lot of work um, to, in, to look at all of that but um, it's not been ruled out at this stage. Lovely that's good that's great uh, somebody else has just tweeted in to say uh, don't forget uh, the in drive movies in the RDS is back for December. The Elf, Santa Claus, and lots more on. So to book that online, I think that's that's really that, that that's excellent. Um, that's that's excellent. Okay, well I am. Uh, we're almost out of time. I don't know if there's any more questions that anyone has or anything that anyone wants to say that's on on the group. Um, so. Um, and if not, um, Brendan, do you have you anything to say to finish up with? Uh, oh. Yeah, please should go on. Do you want to say yeah. something there? Please do. Do you want to say something there, Patricia? Um, I wish you I, I wish you all a very happy Christmas. Well, that's excellent. Happy and, Christmas. Make, and the same thing. And you too much cake. <laughs> And make sure you buy yourself something special. Or oh, I'll do this online already. Good for you. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good for no, you. Okay. Really can't wait for okay. And I'll just see if 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 Ross would like to say a final word. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, everybody happy Christmas uh, and uh, and a happy new year in, in 2021. And that's all possible. Uh, we get a good vaccine in and please try uh, next year we'll have a proper Christmas and uh, and uh, uh, let's hope uh, to our future everyone will go back to normal and we'll go back to normal. 
Good, excellent, lovely, lovely. Ross, that's great. And Una, do you want to say anything to to, to finish up? Me. Um. Merry Christmas, and hope we can pass this COVID nineteen all together and look forward. Lovely, great, perfect. That's lovely. Thank you. And Brendan, do you want to say anything finally to 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 the group? No, all, all I want to say is we underestimate ourselves. Everything that's been discussed here this afternoon has been so positive and so well thought through that I, I'm certainly very confident we will get through this with, with, with all of your work and help. I'm, I, I'm advising people maybe to eat a little bit too much cake this year. You can always work it off after Christmas, but this has been a difficult time. So buy yourself that big gift and feel free to eat that little bit too much cake, Patricia. Don't be so hard on yourself. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Mary All you need to do is to go dancing. The fox trot. <laughs> Mary, did you have something to say, Mary Lucy? Yeah, I was just wondering, Mary Lennon, I think Mary Lennon um, from the Daughters of Charities, did you see her there, Mary? Because I think she's with us. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't see her. No, didn't see her, Mary. No. Okay. And, and nothing has come in. So, oh, so right. maybe she just didn't get joined. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah. regards to Mary. And all I just want to say is thank you all very much for joining. And it was just lovely to see everyone and create a little bit of the of the of the festivist atmosphere and and we're all looking forward, as Mary said, to the toy show on, on Friday night and, and getting ready for the toy show. And I just want to wish everyone a, a very ha happy and, and safe and a, a peaceful Christmas. And uh, do treat yourself and have a, have a wonderful time. And we will send out the link to the calendar because a number of queries have come in from that. So thank you, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. bye. bye.